some tough tough security guys? Something like that. It yeah, was they're, like, they're, yeah, taking a job. We, we, we had some Paul Blurts. We had some Paul Blurts. Yeah. Trying to rush us off the field when we were like, I they told us we could be it. on the field. Like, this pass yeah, literally says I could be here. No, you got to be in the stands. <laughs> There's no one in the stands, bro. Like, what are you? <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, because I think they switched. I remember I got on the field, and then I saw one guy, like, kicking people off. I think I was able to get on there right before. So. Yeah. Because right when you go down that tunnel, because, like, I got there, I go to the restroom, you know, wash my hands. I see Reggie McKenzie. I come out. I'm like, oh, wow. There's a <laughs> bunch of people here. Get yeah. right there. They're like, oh, let me see your wristband. Depending on the color, you, can you be on the field or not? Because only agents or something could be on the field. But then, like, yeah. we had all the TV people set up. And then we were just, like, on one side of the stadium, which, by the way, I did not realize. I don't know how they get 100,000 people in that stadium because those, like, the seating is very on top of each other. It's very small. Yeah, they're bleachers. <laughs> they're literally bleachers. Well, like, yeah. how how was the press box? Were you? The, were, how, how, I how, still how, smell the Raiders championship in there. I know, right? How would you compare <laughs> press boxes from like the Wildcats press box to that NFL PA Bowl press box? Any other press box well, I, you've been in? Yeah, I mean the the Rose Bowl press box. What's cool about the Rose Bowl is it's the Rose Bowl. That's about the view yep. is awesome. Yep. The yep. fact you're in the kind of golf Rose course, Bowl, it, but it kind of ends there. Like you're way high up. There's glass. You don't even hear the sound. You can't even hear the sounds on the field. I mean, you feel like you're watching it on TV, but you can't even see what's going on. Those were, Whereas Wildcats, you're like you're on top of the action. You're right there because it's a small stadium. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. So with that, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find you, what what you're working on right now, and all that good stuff. Yeah, fellas. Hey, thanks again for having me on. But yeah, no you worries. can uh, find My me boss. on Twitter, Ryan Dyrud, LAFB. The main account is LAFB Network. We're on all social media, LAFB Network. Uh, the website is lafbnetwork.com. The podcast is Believe in LA Football. All pretty easy to find. Just LA Football, and, and you'll find us. And uh, just working on constant uh, off-season stuff. Uh, a bunch of good articles there. We got uh, some prospect stuff with the Bruins and Trojans. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just getting through this quarantine, pumping stuff out. I actually had Josh Johnson on my podcast today, who is Dope. former LA Wildcats quarterback. Town so business. Marshawn Lynch's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Right, they're doing a Madden tournament. You got to, they were promoting that, so you got to check that out. It's cool. a pros versus Joes Madden tournament. Ooh, awesome, that could be a bloodbath. All right, Ryan. Well, thank you, man. Best to you and your family and your baby, and really appreciate this. We got to do this again soon. We got to have a, a live tailgate or something once events are you know safe again. I propose a summer barbecue. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, guys. I'm in. So, and I'll, I'll get you guys on my show too. We'll have to we'll have to get you on that, and and we'll we'll just talk more football. Most Amen, definitely. Really. So thanks for having me on. Appreciate you guys. Stay Likewise. safe. Have a great night. You too. Stay safe. Take care. Yeah, man. Shout out to Ryan. That was a long time coming. Um, I actually, you know, talked to him even before the the first live event we did, the draft event. Um, you know, he was already had his own event that he was going to. But, you know, from there, even before that, I had been following him because, you know, he was doing the West Coast sports thing. So I was kind of following what he was doing there and just been following him since. You know, like I said, he's, you know, kind of done different brands of the podcast and the network. And now he seems to have really found kind of, you know, his lane and his niche. And, you yeah. know, obviously you can see what he's he knows what he's talking about. And he's, you know, really, really out, out there engaged with, you know, both. All four fan communities, really, I feel yeah. like. And, like, especially, like, with those Wildcat games, you run into a lot of local media guys and, like, people who actually wanted to be there. Yeah, that's that's the crazy thing. It's not, it's not just, okay, the same people who get – the same publications who get the same access, you know, regardless of who's there. It's, you know, the people who are have their hair down and are doing the work and want to break in. Especially like there, being who in the, finally getting finally getting their notice, you know. Exactly, especially being in that press room after the games. Like, wish they had more home games. Wish we could have finished out the season, but man, it was it was dope, and it was great, and just yeah. And again, the press box food in those Wildcat games. What's up with you and talking about press boxes? 
Bro, the food was fire. I'm, I'm gonna hungry. Get a bit, I'm I gonna miss get hood a Chinese. Bit. I miss I'm gourmet gonna, hood Chinese. I'm gonna get. I'm losing weight, as you can tell. <laughs> and I'm frustrated because like I'm starting I'm, to eat really healthy at my job now. I'm like, getting you a bit about that. We're gonna do something about that. Press Press Box Chronicles or something. We can play Press Box Bingo. <laughs> Journalist Press Box Bingo. That should something be fire. Like that. Seriously, when this is all over, we're gonna have like before. I don't know if it's our two hundredth episode. We're gonna get courtside all sports podcasts. Everybody's welcome. We're gonna just get. One big ass podcast in a park somewhere and just talk shit and eat a lot of good food. I feel like that needs to happen. Like, I'm just putting that out there in the universe. In the universe, it's going to happen. Keith, you're probably listening. Shout out to Cam Newton. By the way, Cam Newton is a Taurus. That tells me everything I need to know about Cam Newton. That lets me literally. You shouldn't overlook him? Like, just, you're a Taurus. My mom's a Taurus. That's what I mean. I understand so, you so you shouldn't overlook him. Not only that, like, I just will never get mad at him for who he is because he's a Taurus. Like, if anything, y'all should be apologizing to Cam Newton because he's a Taurus. Like, it's not his fault. It's your fault for not understanding him. Now I'm an even bigger Tam- Cam Newton fan. So there. And which we, which we'll hope talk he goes about, to the Jaguars. Which we can we'll talk see. about a little bit later. But, you know, I can't before- wait to use him in Madden because I'm signing him to – I'm getting the, the, all the free agents and just putting them on one team or in your case if you do your Madden simulation you should probably just have him be your QB but yeah man so back to kind of what I was talking about while I was stalling for Ryan to call in <laughs> <laughs> damn so yeah man the NFL Two players who are anonymous right now are basically suing American Airlines, saying they were they were harassed, groped, and uh, had their face masks removed and everything while they were on a plane. And essentially, they're saying the airline, the attendants didn't want to give their names. The they didn't want to give the um, other passengers who did it their names. So, pretty much, the players are saying. Are blaming the airline, saying, you know, you guys didn't do shit about this, so... And slapping you with a lawsuit. Yep. Pretty much, that's that. And if this case doesn't go anywhere, we're going to have to have a serious conversation about how women abuse men and nothing gets done about it. Wow. We're going there. Are we ready for that conversation? Are they ready for this conversation? Because, I mean, this is a place where we, we, we address toxicity. Good or bad, so are y'all ready for this conversation? I'm just saying. But anyway, proceed. Um, yeah, that was about it. That's all that's all I want to talk about. Next topic. Y'all have no idea how much I love this shotgun blast. The Rooney rule. Sorry. I'm spacey today. Speaking of uh, blast and unnecessary bug shots. Which so unnecessary- after rumors that the Rooney rule was going to essentially include a third round pick. Yeah. If you interviewed or hired more minority two. candidates two, at least two and Marvin Lewis, you know, a black head coach, someone we've interviewed at the NFL PA bowl this past January a forefather in the football community. Um, essentially said it's Jim Crow laws in the NFL. Like who, who, what coach wants to be put in that situation where they're hired just because of a draft pick? Draft picks are gold in the NFL. It's a, it's affirmative action and it's a slap in the face. Yeah. You're not here because you're talented. You're here because it's a quota, nigga. Like that defeats the per, like that literally is like, this is how I don't don't like how you said that. Honestly, I was kind of offended. (laughs) You <laughs> now you know how it feels to be black. No, it just caught me off guard. Day. Like, like, <laughs> every like second of every day. That, like, where did that come from? Like, a place of I'm being scared of you now. <laughs> really? That's all it took? I kind of did this from the are beginning? You just, are you just a, a, a closet racist? I don't even know about it. Are you? <laughs> no, but I. I that's pretty much the energy that the law gives. No, off. no, I got it. I got it. I got Just what my you're delivery saying. was really yeah. strong and intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? Black man, what you want? What you think? <laughs> but yeah, man. So what they ended up doing Shit. was requiring NFL teams to hire more. To I'm sorry, interview more candidates at both the head coaching 
and coordinator positions. So something that they've been talking about doing or should have been done, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. But finally, 20, 20 years ago, we might see a black coach get a coordinator position. But who knows? They might just use that as a way to typecast him as, well, he's just a QB coach or whatever. He's Eric just a, the enemy still doesn't have a head coaching job. Brad Childress was a head coach on the league. He was one of Andy Reid's assistants. Um, what's his name? Eagles head coach? I'm on spacing on his name right now. I mean, he's interviewed for every job, but maybe he just hasn't got the money he wants. Like, why leave no, 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 a no, perfect no, 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 no. If they want you, they will give you the money. Matt Rule That's got true. the money. That's true. Joe, whatever the hell his name is, a special teams coach in New England. Got the money. I feel you. If you're a white candidate, even if you're not qualified for the job, because I don't think the Giants coach is compared to Eric Bieniemy. If you're qualified for the job, even if you're not qualified, they're gonna pay you when you're white. That's just a that's just a bigger microcosm in life. When you're white on the job, you're gonna get paid, and you're gonna get the title. And everything that comes with it. If you're not white, you're already coming in there knowing that you're a minority. Which, personally, I hate the word minority because there's nothing minor about me. I'm not white. You should just, like... And so to hire for diversity and throw in things like that, when you try to be politically correct, you end up with this type of energy that this bullshit rule gives off. That oh we're gonna try to hire we're gonna we're gonna hire more people. It's like the equivalent of being told you're overqualified, which that shit boils my blood. Like it's literally like saying you're too overqualified for this position, so you're just I not agree. gonna get a position and we're gonna with, hire somebody else. I agree else. with everything that you're saying. The only thing that I will say is that you know, it also doesn't mean that everybody has to be forced into a, a job that they don't want either. Oh yeah, know? that's true, but if so, we're not getting the if, same traction, if, if you deserve a job and you deserve a look and you're not even getting the interview because somebody's cousin's buddy's third nephew's wife, whatever, like whatever game you want to play, whatever nepotism game happens. Basically, what I'm saying is I agree with you. Like, it's not fair. I'll take but, equal opportunity. But with that. I think Bellamy, if if he's I don't want, he he's, shouldn't he's take gonna a job. Get, he's going to get a he's going to get a good spot. How do you know? Because he's had too many interviews already to. What if he goes to Jacksonville and they're already a shit show and ownership doesn't give him any control over who he wants to draft? And then. Whoa. We, how many times have we seen coaches get run out of town? Jacksonville is probably going to be trash this year, but they'll be looking up the following year. This and was then like you'll the be sweet able to get, spot. And then of, you'll be able to get your. See, the other thing about taking a coaching job is you want to make sure you have a say, especially as an offensive coach, who your quarterback is. And you also want to make sure you have a, a say in, you know, what personnel is going to happen. The Giants so have- that's another element, which, you know, to your point, you know, black head coaches don't get that same say. So How many black you know, offensive coordinators, I, how many position coaches get to go to offense? So so what I'm saying is it's also there, there's layers to it. You know, he also has to have the right situation because we all know black Coaches get the worst situations, you know. And college too. Yeah. So, if it hasn't worked out, like, I don't. Necess- I mean, it's not great because yeah, the numbers are so bad. But you know, for him as an individual, he can't miss. Yeah, it's gonna come. And be, but that's what I'm saying because he's he might win another fucking Super Bowl this year as an offensive yeah, coordinator. He's riding out with Mahomes. But my thing is this: it shouldn't be that way. That's the what landscape. If, like, it, it's okay. only one of them. Name what if it's a, three other black offensive of head coordinators, coordinators. What if it's a McDaniel situation even? What if it's, you know, he's, oh, he's the next guy up? You but, know, maybe he wants to stay there around for Andy Reid, support him. But who's you to know? say they'll hire him? Let's say they go that's to the defensive coordinator. Though. That's Let's what they're going to spank Nolo or whatever like, his name You is. know, if he was just in another team that was, like, descending, you know, like, but he's not. He's on a team that's still at the peak. Is still going to be at the peak. So he's still set up. If he wants to be with this boy Andy, you know who took a chance on him, who helped him get a Super Bowl. Yeah, my gum. Who helped him get a Super Bowl and with a QB 
who's going to break the bank and also, you know, make sure. What? You think Mahomes going to get paid $40 million and not buy that man a, a, a nice Rolls Royce? Like, like, you think Christmas? he's only getting $40 million? Something, man. You think Mahomes isn't getting $60 million? Something, man. He better get his OC some. All I'm saying is his OC should never have to buy food again in Kansas City. <laughs> he should never. He should get lifetime barbecue. 